SpaceX has a new goal for 2025. They are going to build one rocket every three days, or two rockets every week. And that rocket is called the Starship. More specifically, they're talking about the Starship upper stage. That's the pointy bit at the top with wings sticking out of it. And they're going to build those rockets in a very special new manufacturing plant called the Star Factory. This is all a part of the company's ultimate goal, to colonize the planet Mars and build a self-sustaining city of a million people. It's ambitious, to say the least, and in order to even begin accomplishing this goal, the first thing that SpaceX is going to need will be rockets. Big ones, and lots of them. Let's establish the location of our star factory. This is Boca Chica, Texas. It's located on the Gulf Coast, just a hair north of the Mexican border, and it's about as far south as you can get in the United States without being in the Florida Everglades. Now, you've probably seen a SpaceX Starship rocket launch before. If not, this is what that looks like. Pretty cool. The launch pad is down by the water at Boca Chica Beach, while the Star Factory, where those rockets are built, is about two and a half miles back inland at what used to be called Boca Chica Village, but has now become known as Starbase. It's essentially a company town for the top engineers and administrators at SpaceX. Elon Musk himself spends a lot of time living here, it's also soon to become the company's official headquarters, and it's where they build and test the largest, most powerful rocket system in the world. The current Star Factory site was previously occupied by three long tents. This is where the team manufactured Starship V1. That's the rocket that we saw perform five suborbital test hops in 2020 and 2021, and that was followed by six orbital flights with the Super Heavy booster beginning in April 2023. The booster is the entire bottom half of the fully integrated rocket. It's basically just two giant fuel tanks with 33 engines stuffed into the bottom. While the Starship itself is the upper stage, this is a much more complex vehicle. It has six engines, four motorized control flaps, a payload bay, and a heat shield. This ship is also home to the brain of the rocket, a powerful flight computer and communication system that uses Starlink satellite internet to connect with mission control back down at Starbase. They built that all in tents, and while the tent system allowed SpaceX to get up and running very rapidly with Starship operations, it was far from an ideal solution. Elon Musk has said that in the first phase of Starship manufacturing, everything was always covered in mud and dust and there were birds everywhere. But the tents allowed for a level of flexibility that SpaceX required in those early days. Since there has never been anything like Starship built before, no one really knew what the finished product was going to look like, so the non-permanent nature of the tents allowed for rapid changes in the design and manufacturing process. If you try something and it doesn't work, then just scrap it and try something else. This is how we ended up with Starship rockets that in some cases were very different from build to build, and we generally saw that reflected in how successful or unsuccessful the vehicles were in action. That process of trial and error has finally come together into a new Starship design that Elon and SpaceX feel confident can accomplish some pretty ambitious goals. A fully, rapidly reusable, orbital vehicle that can transport people and cargo to the Moon and Mars. Elon has said that the 10 system becomes very inefficient once you know what you want to build, and that's where Starship V2 comes into play. This is the vehicle that we saw fly for the first time on the seventh orbital launch of the Starship and Super Heavy, and for the first time the ship was loaded with a payload that could be deployed into space. Unfortunately, our first experience with Starship V2 was short-lived. It sprung a leak, caught fire, and exploded while on the way to space, which just goes to show you that the work is never done. There's always room for improvement. And that's what SpaceX does best continuous improvement, something that the Japanese refer to as kaizen, and it's a core philosophy in their culture. Small changes over time can lead to big improvements, and that's what Starship testing has always been about. The design of Starship V2, or sometimes called Block 2, is not radically different from the classic V1. It's a little bit taller, by about 2 meters, and that stretch allows it to carry 25% more fuel than before, which 
then allows the ship to fly higher and faster while carrying heavy weight. The biggest visible change to Starship Block 2 really comes around the nose cone and the design of the aero flaps. If we remember back to Starship Flight Test Number 4, we got a close-up view of a nose flap as it slowly disintegrated throughout the re-entry process. That is not supposed to happen, and SpaceX definitely knew that their flap design wasn't ideal to begin with. Prior to that flight, Elon expressed some doubt that the hinge mechanism would be sturdy enough. He also wrote this post back in 2021 that said, Forward flaps will change a lot in upcoming versions, but the team needed some real-world flight data to help steer them in the right direction. This is what they've come up with. The V2 nose flaps are more diamond-shaped, with a distinct point at the trailing edge. That's going to help push the shock waves from the atmosphere away from the ship's body and prevent too much pressure from building up under the wing. The V2 flaps are also mounted higher up on the nose. This will increase the amount of leverage that they can exert on the ship, and they are further back to the leeward side of the hull. This again will help to reduce the amount of hot plasma that builds up underneath them on re-entry. In addition, we can see that the new flaps are about half the thickness of the originals, with a much lower profile hinge mechanism as well. As for the heat shield, we get a lot more tiles on the V2 nose cone. They wrap around to cover more of that leeward side of the vehicle, and should hopefully prevent any future melting incidents. It's very important to insulate up here because Starship has a header tank up inside the nose cone, that's where they store all the propellant for the landing burn. Starbase reporters have already been able to watch the V2 nose cone segments being worked on inside the Star Factory because they do this step right next to one of the large windows. The manufacturing process that SpaceX is using inside the Star Factory is something that Elon has described as a linear adjacent flow, which seems to be a terminology that originates with Elon Musk because every result when you Google it is just people wondering what Elon meant when he said it and no one being able to give a straight answer. Even when asked about it on X a few months ago, Elon only replied, simple but essential principles. From what I've gathered, Star Factory production is kind of opposite to the standard moving assembly line that was championed by Henry Ford a hundred years ago, where a product moves down a conveyor belt and gradually has more and more stuff attached to it until it becomes a finished product. Elon knows from building Tesla vehicles that there is a lot of room for improvement over that old system. So this linear adjacent flow is probably something very similar or exactly the same as Tesla's new unboxed manufacturing process, which is all about building out separate segments of the car in parallel manufacturing, then bringing them all together at the very end. So instead of building the body of a car from front to back on one line, then adding doors, then sending it off to the paint shop, then putting it back on the line, then taking the doors off, then installing the seats, then putting the doors back on, Unboxed means building the front of the car and the back of the car on two separate lines that run in parallel or adjacent to each other. So each half gets built, painted, seats, and interior installed all in one continuous process. Then on a third adjacent line, you build the sides of the car and the doors. Then at final assembly, you bring the front and back together. You attach the sides and the doors, add the glass, add the wheels, and you've got a finished car. When Elon talks about the production line in the Star Factory, he says there are stations that things move through. Each station has specialized labor for each individual task, and the tempo at which the products move from one station to the next is key to the whole process. That means no downtime, no waiting for the next thing to arrive, continuous motion on the production line, but the line itself does not move. Elon says that it doesn't matter if there's a conveyor belt. Here's how this plays out inside the Star Factory. The production process begins at the end of the building. That's the furthest from the road. This is where giant rolls of stainless steel are cut and welded into rings. These make up the body segment of the ship. The nose cone is a little more difficult to make the pointy segment. The stainless steel needs to be pressed into shapes using a process called stretch forming. They do the same to make the round domes that cap off the tops and bottoms of the ship's fuel tanks. The rings get stacked and welded together into segments three to five rings per section. We can see that the roof line of the Star Factory gets progressively higher as it gets close to the road, and that corresponds with the rocket segments becoming taller as they move down the assembly lines. Near the end, everything is starting to look pretty much like a starship and less like a pile of steel. We can see that SpaceX has different stations for mounting and checking heat shield tiles, for fitting and plumbing fuel tanks, for building thruster assemblies. They also have this big glass box full of computer desks 
That might not seem like a big deal, but it shows that the engineers and coders who design this process are not far off and detached, working from luxury condos on sunny beaches. They are right there, on the production floor, next to the technicians who actually put this stuff together. But even the tallest segment of the Star Factory is too short to hold a fully assembled Starship. So, just like the Tesla Unboxed line will build the front, back, and sides of the vehicle separately, SpaceX builds the top, bottom, and middle of the Starship in individual segments. SpaceX says that the Star Factory allows them to move integration work to an earlier phase of the manufacturing process. Whereas back in the tent days, each of the rocket segments would come out of the manufacturing phase as nothing more than a giant steel tube. It wouldn't be until the final assembly that all of the guts and attachments that actually make it a spaceship would get installed. So you'll see that the nose cone segment comes out of the Star Factory with its flaps and heat shield already installed. There's also a lot of plumbing and electrical going on inside as well. The middle of the rocket is mostly humongous propellant tanks with a lot of pipes running through them, and the bottom is where the magic happens, the thrust segment. Those three chunks then get brought out of the Star Factory and moved to the Starship equivalent of a general assembly area, the Mega Bay. Starbase has two Mega Bays, and this is where the final rocket stacking takes place. The Raptor engines are installed and all of the finishing touches that go into making the vehicle ready for action. We know that Elon Musk has some pretty ambitious goals for Starship production. This Star Factory might be the first, but it certainly won't be the last. Elon says that in the long term, he could see SpaceX building 1,000 Starships per year. That would be well into the Mars City building phase, but in the short term, he thinks that the existing Star Factory can build around 100 rockets per year, one every three days or so. SpaceX is already laying the foundation for Star Factory 2 at their property on Cape Canaveral, near the launch pad that's also being constructed for Starship down there. That would, at the very least, double the rocket building to one every day and a half. Then, with some added efficiency thrown in, all of a sudden, SpaceX is building one rocket per day. That is the ultimate goal, to establish a fleet of 1,000 starships and have them all ready to travel from the Earth to Mars in one epic convoy of humanity that will bridge the gap between two planets and extend our civilization to a whole new world. It all begins with building rockets.